Today's the first of Clippers game review. What's up, guys? Coming to you guys with a late game review. I had to, this is take 12 because I really just made 11 videos because I was frustrated. But now that I got it all out there, I'm not as frustrated anymore. Wizards lose to the Clippers. E 112 to 113. They lose by one point. Start out on a 13 0 run. Start the game. Clips don't even score until like the seventh minute of the game. Wizards end up losing by one because of a lot of mistakes on everybody's end. Everybody was making mistakes today. The refs making mistakes. The clock person made mistakes. We made mistakes. Everybody's making mistakes. The Wizards missed eight of their free throws. So you can't even really blame this loss on, on the refs and the clock lady or the clock man or whoever was running the clock because we missed eight freaking free throws. But this game was absolutely crazy. This actually game went down to the wire after the Wizards started on a 13-0 run. Ended up going down to the wire. You know why? Because it was a Wizards game. That's why. So it ended up going down to the wire. The refs, the person that was supposed to start the clock, started the clock early. The clock started before Bradley Beals hand even touched the ball. And if you watch highlights, that play is actually not added in some of the highlights if you watch. And... Yeah, the, the clock started before Bradley Beal's hand even touched the ball, and they had to redo the whole play, drop a whole new play, and it ended with Gortat taking the last shot. Yeah, Gortat to the last shot. And not only did Gortat take the last shot, Gortat took a three-point attempt as a last shot with Austin Rivers' hand in his face. Like, Austin Rivers was playing so tough. Uh, like, Austin Rivers was acting like he was this L.A. gangster on the court tonight. I don't know where that came from. He was like, he was doing the absolute most. Anyways, Wizards lose. Crazy ass game. The refs was effing up for real, for real. They put 1.1 seconds on the clock instead of 1.2 seconds left on the clock. The, what's the guy's name? The refs, uh, DeAndre Jordan pushed Gortat on that rebound. And if that was called as a foul, it probably would have changed the course of the game. But like I said, who's to really blame when you miss all your free throws? This game was such a disappointment, such a heartbreaker because it went down to the wire. Like, I couldn't even look at the TV anymore. Like, I had to keep looking away. Like, I kept telling myself, like, maybe I'll walk out and come back and see what happens. And it just, like, it felt like it was going on forever. I just kept thinking, like, okay, maybe I'll walk out and come back. And then it may be over. And I don't have to suffer through this anymore. Like, my heart was racing. Like, that game was crazy. And it should not have even went like that. It should not have even went down to the wire. But like I said, when you missed your free throws, Sadoransky missed his two key free throws that would have put the Wizards up by six with like a minute left in the game and Bradley Beal missed some free throws I think about three free throws auto one free throw and Kelly Oubre missed his two free throws as well this game was insane I don't even think I need to give you guys the stats of everything because this game was like literally insane Sweet Lou hit a three in Bradley Beal's face to win the game right then and there basically because it was only 1.2 seconds left on the game and they should have Stayed on him, kind of doubled on him. But it was like, what could you really do? Like, what could you really do? Because Lou makes his living off of making those type of shots. And him rolling with Harden last year didn't make it any better for anybody else. Probably picked up mad skills and tips over there. And yeah, this was a this was an insane game. Like, uh, Otto Porter finally got out of his shooting slump. He went for 27, 11, and 5. 5 assists, 11 rebounds, 27 points. Bradley Beal with 25, 3, and 2, but it wasn't enough. Uber went 0 for 0 for 0 for 0 for 0 for 0 for 0. He went 0 from everything. 0 from the three point, 0 from field goal, 0 from off a layup, 0 from the free throw line, 0 from everywhere. And this was Kelly Uber's 22nd birthday today. He went 0 for 0 for 0 for 0 all night, which is crazy. I guess it's like the pressure of like playing in front of your family and you know it's your birthday and you're about to go party or whatever. It's an early game. He was talking about how this that God alarmed the stars for him today that it would be an early game you could enjoy the rest of the birthday after the win but um that that didn't this game just didn't go as planned like this game didn't go as planned at all like we really thought we were going to come away with this I, I guess we thought the Clips were just going to roll over and die because they don't have any of their stars anymore but the Clippers really went out there and gave it a lot of fight even though they started out at 13-0 they started on the 13 they started out with zero points until the seventh minute of the game um I think it was like a lot of the pressure. I think it was a lot of pressure though on Uber though, because if you notice in the game against the Pelicans where his entire family was there, he only scored two points. So maybe he feels a lot of pressure playing in front of his family. I don't know. But um yeah, this game was crazy. Sadoransky 
had a good game with 11, 6, and 6. Yon Mahimi played a really great game as well. 14 points, 3 assists, 2 rebounds. Yes, 2 rebounds. He played for 24 minutes. He was out during the last play of the game, which I thought was really weird. I thought he should have been in. I don't know why they brought, like, maybe Keith or something. Like, when I saw them bring me, like, Gortat in, I was like, why are they doing this? But whatever, maybe they don't want Yon to foul. But Yon has been playing good defense. He had a double-double tonight. Did he? No, he didn't have a double-double, but he had he scored in double figures, though, which is good. 14 points, excuse me, which is his season high this season. Mike Scott did amazing, 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 amazing. He went 12 for 12 from last, since Tuesday. He hasn't missed a shot since Tuesday. I think he missed, like, one or two shots in this game, but he's been playing great. He's basically perfect. He plays, he plays so crazy. Like, he had 22 points, 8 rebounds, and 2 assists. Frazier with 2, 5, and 6. Um, Gortat with 9, 4, and 8, 8 rebounds, 4 assists, but Mike Scott plays really, was playing really great, he plays, honestly, people always say Mike Scott is on drugs, but when you see him in person, it, I'm gonna let y'all see him in person and let y'all make the decision for y'all, so, um, let me see, Clippers, 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 C. Williams with 3, Harold with 11, Wilson with 2, Evans, 8, played very well off the bench, uh, Gallinari came back. Everybody seems to be coming back from their from their injury against the Wizards. And 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 man, I don't even freaking know. Anyway, twenty five points, three rebounds, two assists. Johnson, Wesley Johnson, with five and two. DeAndre Jordan with six points, two assists, and seventeen rebounds. Seventeen. Let me see how much the Wizards had. I don't know. Nobody had nobody had no double figure stuff. Anyways. Williams, Lou Williams with 35, 8, and 2, of course, including that three-pointer against Beal and all those three-pointers he made against Uber when he was eating him up on the floor. Harold, did I say that? 11, yeah. Thornwell, 2. Austin Rivers playing mad gangster all night tonight, 16 points, 7 rebounds, playing, acting super gangster after he hit that shot. Like, he was a real LAG on the floor just all night. Let me see. Um, DeAndre Jordan with, yeah, I already talked about him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clippers played a great game after being down and being without their stars. They actually brought it, they actually brought it together. They brought it down to, they brought it down to the wire with us. And it was like toe to toe towards the end. Got very exciting towards the end of the game. But ultimately, Wizards lose. And, you know, what the hell? So, yeah, ultimately, the Wizards pull off a L again. Uh, important game. I guess, I don't know if it's LA, like, we ain't win. We haven't won. Wizards have not won against the LA Clippers in LA since 2008. Like, is that not uh, motivation enough for you to try? No? Okay. Anyways, Otto Porter got out of his slump to that, which is important. He was shooting perfect at first in the field. Left with 70, 27 points. Um, Mike Scott had a great, amazing game. He's playing really, really well for them right off the bench. He gets you buckets, he gets you buckets, he gets you buckets, he gets you buckets. Um, excuse me, I'm still dealing with the flu, whatever. So, Wizards drop this one again. They're going to play the Nets this week. I'm going to review that game, and then I'm probably going to take a little break because Wizards are getting on my nerves, and they're stressing me out, and they're ruining my days. And, yeah, I need a little break from this. And, um, happy birthday, Kelly Oubre. And, uh... Hope you guys can make this one up tonight and make you feel a little bit better and make us feel better by winning against the Nets, hopefully, okay? And um, I think this is going to be it. So, peace, guys. It's your girl, Janice.